Hello everyone, so in this video I'll be showing how to create a response surface design uh, using jump but uh, before that uh, let me give you some uh, brief explanation as to why this design is useful. So again this design is uh, very useful to identify important factors or uh, if you have interactions among your uh, factors then it can uh, help in identifying the main uh, effects uh, that are interacting with one another. Uh, and uh, also uh, one other thing that is required for this particular type of design is that you need three levels of continuous variables. So basically the model that you generally build is 3 power k where k is the number of factors. Uh, but however, uh, as you can see from this table here on the right, which is the three power table, uh, you can see that if you have uh, uh, for like uh, more than a certain number of variables, the number of experiments that you will have to be uh, is actually quite large. So uh, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, when you are doing uh, such design of experiments, uh, when you have resource uh, constraints or uh, cost constraints, then uh, uh, doing a full level response of design uh, may not be economical. So something called a central composite design which is a subset of the response of design is uh, usually used. So basically uh, this is a uh, this design uh, you can do something called sequential experimentation about which I'll be talking about in one of my future videos. But basically uh, this design has uh, three main components. It has a two part two full factorial design and uh, then uh, it has uh, central points uh, and or I should say in this case it's actually 2 power k if you have uh, two factors so if you have three factors then it will be uh, 2 to the power of 3 uh, and so on so and then it will have uh, center points it can be either 2 or 4 depending on your requirements uh, basically the center points are used to check for uh, uh, adequacy of fit or you can also call it as lack of fit and then it has axial points which is mainly used to determine the quadratic effects. So this is actually one of the main difference between the full factorial uh, or the factorial based uh, design and the response of this design. Uh, because you are including these axial, axial points you can account for quadratic effects. And so basically your fit line uh, in, in, in the case of uh, the factorial design you have a linear line that fits your uh, data but in this case you will have a uh, curvature or a surface that is fitting towards your uh, data points so this is actually one of the uh, main things that uh, you can account for using the response surface designs so the main advantage of uh, response surface design is as i mentioned before you can run this sequentially uh, so what I mean by this is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are going to be three different categories of points. So we have factorial points, we have center points and axial points. So usually when you are doing the CCD, uh, the center points and the full, factor, the fa full factorial points are run first. And then only if required, axial points are run. So this is the main advantage of uh, response surface design. So now let me switch over to jump to show you how to create the response surface design. So this will be uh, under the DOE menu and uh, come to classical and then choose response surface design. So here uh, you can enter the uh, variable name or the response name. I am again using the thickness uh, and my goal here is to match target and the target is between 48 and uh, 53. And here uh, I am so here you can see that already there are uh, three uh, values but uh, I will be adding one so totally there will be three continuous uh, factors so this will be speed uh, concentration and uh, uh, big temperature okay so this uh, I will uh, uh, let's say the speed is between 2000 and 4000 the concentration is between 1 and 3 big temperature is between 65 and 95 then if I click continue uh, you can see uh, uh, the types of designs uh, or various things that uh, can be done with this kind of uh, factors so we will choose central composite design which is a 16 run uh, design and then when you click continue you can also here include the 
uh, the number of uh, center points and uh, you can also include the type of axial points that you want to include. Uh, idea, usually uh, you choose on face, but there are other options available. So once you choose that, you click uh, make table. So here you can see that uh, this is a 16 run central composite design. And uh, uh, so another thing that you can do is for the sake of clarity, I can choose this pattern column. Uh, and uh, then uh, I can say sort then say ascending so here now you can see that uh, since we had three factors uh, so this is a uh, two to the power of three factorial points the first eight points and then the column number nine to uh, uh, okay uh, so here uh, nine to uh, 12 and then 15 and 16 these are all the axial points which are six in number and then columns 13 uh, sorry rows 13 and 14 are actually the center points so now if you click on the model uh, you can see the kind of uh, interaction that happens over here and so when you actually have the data you can put in the data and then run this uh, interaction uh, yes and here you can see that speed and rs conservation and rs bake and rs these are the three terms that you know account for the uh, the uh, quadratic terms so this will be actually speed to the power of 2 conservation to the power of 2 bake temperature to the power of 2 so this is how you create a uh, central composite design uh, in jump